In August of 1941, the Soviet Union was struggling to defend the motherland against the fierce Nazi forces piercing its borders. The Red Army stretched across the front line, thinning its troops to protect the perimeter of the recently inaugurated Eastern Front. Premier Joseph Stalin had been confident that Adolf Hitler would not be so foolish as to engage on a second battlefront while already at war with the Western powers. But the ravenous Third Reich had proved him wrong a few months earlier, and now he had to make up for the lost time. Soon, the German army reached the surroundings of Kiev, and Stalin couldn't hide his disappointment. A clandestine picture of his reaction was eventually smuggled from the Kremlin, going against strict orders to destroy all evidence of Stalin's frailty. Three reasons. The debate about Stalin's prominence as a war leader remains a heated matter. The numerous theses analyzing the figure of the Soviet premier have come to little agreement in the decades following World War II. Among Stalin's most relevant counselors, only three left detailed memoirs that offered insight into the real political views of the Soviet leader, as well as the actual planning in the year before the German invasion. Marshals G. K. Zhukov, A. M. Vasilevsky, and K. A. Moretzkov dug into Stalin's attitudes but raised more questions than answers about the dictator's inner motives. Zhukov, for one, reasoned that Stalin made several mistakes, but the marshal argued that such shortcomings cannot be considered without the historical context and the economic and political implications of the time. As such, opinions also differ regarding his response to potential German aggression before Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa. Still, historians mostly condemn Stalin for three pre-war actions, or more accurately, oversights. First, they accuse the Soviet leader of neglecting several warnings of an upcoming war. Second, he is harshly judged for not sufficiently preparing the USSR for wartime. And last but not least, it is said that he did not have a realistic view of his nation's readiness. But while differing accounts fail to paint a definite portrait of the man, another apocryphal source may give a closer look at his innermost state of mind a forbidden photograph. Assumptions The German attack on the Soviet Union was the most significant operation of World War II, with the deployment of more than six million soldiers. Moreover, the Germans fanned out thousands of aircraft, tanks, and artillery guns to face their mighty opponent. Still, the Germans initially advanced relatively unopposed, while the Red Army was utterly incapable of challenging the invaders. Although Operation Barbarossa represented the clash between the two most totalitarian regimes in history, the first weeks of the campaign were relatively subdued. In reality, the Soviet commanders were taken aback and confused, and there was no structured leadership within the troops, starting with the actual military and the government. It is believed that Stalin was confident that Hitler would not dare attack the Soviet Union, and he was absolutely bewildered when he was proven wrong on the night of June 21, 1941. Realizing that the Germans were really coming, he could not help but be completely shocked when his foreign minister handed him the declaration of war. Still, several analysts claim that only anger kept him standing. Influenced by misinformation and speculation, Stalin never foresaw that the Führer would abruptly deviate from the traditions of Bismarck's Ostpolitik, not even as a last resort. History had taught them that the Third Reich should avoid military involvement in the East while already deeply engaged on the opposite front. Furthermore, it is said that he also had an overblown idea of the influence of the Nazi generals on German leadership. Stalin believed they were abusing their power to precipitate war against the Soviet Union even against Hitler's own wishes and specific instructions. However, he was wrong. Surprise attack. Within the Politburo and the Soviet War Command, the general opinion was that war would be averted. With Germany already engaged in Britain, the Soviets pondered that the Nazis were incapable of fighting on two fronts. Then, on March 20, 1941, 
The head of military intelligence, General Philippe Golikov, submitted a document reporting on German troop concentration in the borderlands. Still, Stalin did not take it seriously, and thought that such information should come from either British or German intelligence services. Less than two months later, Stalin received a similar report, with information from the Soviet naval attaché in Berlin warning the Central Intelligence about the imminent war. But again, the report was mostly ignored, as the information was thought to be either false or planted by a foreign agency. Then the Germans attacked. Halfway through the summer, however, the Führer determined that the most important objective was to deprive the USSR of its industrial areas, relegating Moscow to a secondary target. As such, the German troops headed towards Kiev. Inner Portrait An unauthorized photograph shows Stalin sitting inside the Kremlin at the exact moment he was informed that the invading forces had advanced towards Kiev. Looking down, with his shoulders depressed and his forearms over his knees, the photograph showed a vulnerable side rarely seen. As such, the author of the photo, Komsomolskaya Pravda's editor-in-chief, was menaced to delete it as it was perceived as evidence of weakness. Still, he defied the orders and kept the invaluable picture. Stalin's absolute confidence in his first plan had abruptly shattered, and the utter lack of an alternative suddenly dawned on him. The Soviet leader had reason to be worried. To this day, the encirclement of Kiev is considered the largest such maneuver in history when it comes to the sheer number of troops involved. The operation, part of the larger Barbarossa, ran from August 7th to September 26th and brought an unprecedented defeat for the Red Army. In truth, the failure exceeded the recent Battle of Bielostok-Minsk, trapping roughly half a million soldiers, 2,642 guns and mortars, and 64 tanks. On the southwestern front alone, the Soviets endured over 700,000 casualties, and it would later see the capture of no less than 5 million Soviet troops, most of whom never returned alive. Theories and Facts Many analysts argue that the USSR was the victim of double-crossing and a betrayal of the non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany. But many others claim that Stalin was warned and chose not to prepare his people for what was coming. Still, there are those who acknowledge that the Soviet leader not only knew the war was inevitable, but actively tried to make the necessary preparations, although his attitude might have prevented a better implementation. There's also a more holistic approach that maintains that Stalin did foresee the upcoming war and did not prepare enough. His main mistake was probably a mere time miscalculation, and he simply ran out of it. Furthermore, it is said that Stalin had a mental and nervous breakdown during the first stages of the war and retreated to his Dhaka. Reportedly, he did not issue any orders, leading to chaos at the front and speeding the German advance. Still, there is evidence that the Premier did not indulge in frustration and actively sought the creation of a State Defense Committee. Eventually, his generals did come to his residence and asked him to step up and lead the USSR. Nobody else could take the reins, as his purge policy had worked out flawlessly. The entire country depended on him, and no one dared to oppose him. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoy history and real-life stories from the past, don't hesitate to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels. And for many more incredible moments captured on camera, make sure to check out the rest of our dark footage videos. Stay tuned.